Hello and welcome to this Abingdon Science Partnership workshop on Marvellous Machines with me, Mr Thomas. This workshop is about gears. What are gears? It looks like I'm in the kitchen doing some baking. What's that got to do with gears? Let's watch the video to find out. marvellous machine. Do you know what it is? This is a whisk. When I turn this handle, it turns these beaters at the end and you can use these to mix together the ingredients uh, for whatever you're baking. But it's a fantastic example of a lever, a handle, attached to a gear. You can see this wheel with these teeth on it. Now this is a little bit difficult to see but down inside this bit, there are two more gears, one on each side, and the teeth of the big gear turn the two small gears when I turn the handle and make the beaters go to mix the ingredients. That is an example of a machine that uses gears, and what we're going to do now is have a look at what gears are, how they work, and other machines that use them. So, gears are sometimes called cogwheels, with teeth that overlap, so when one cog turns, it pushes the other one round as well. That's what gears are, just wheels with teeth. Let's go to look for some more gears that we can actually see. What do we use gears for? Lots of machines have gears, but often they are hidden away, like in a car, where they're inside the gearbox. A good place to look at gears is on a bike, where they aren't hidden away at all. In fact, this can be a right nuisance if you get your trousers caught in them or oil on your hands and clothes. Gears are used in machines that make things turn, like the wheels on a bike or a car. Other types of machines, like levers, might be used to start the gears turning. Can you see a lever that does this in the second picture? Yes, it's this crankshaft attached to the pedal where you make the effort to turn the lever. The load is the cog or the gear at the other end which turns the chain. Big gears and small gears. Let's have a look at what happens when we start to put gears together with one gear turning another one. Watch this video clip which will help you to understand what will happen and why this might be useful in a machine. Well, here we have some very nice gears, a nice big orange one and a smaller yellow one. And what you notice about the gears is the bigger one not only has a bigger diameter, that's the distance, across the middle of the circle, but it has more teeth around the edge of the circle. The smaller one has got a smaller diameter and fewer teeth around the edge of the circle. What we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when I turn the larger gear and what happens to the smaller gear. And you're going to need to watch to see how many times the smaller gear turns when I turn the larger gear once. To help you, I've made these little black marks on some of the teeth so that we can keep track of them. So we're going to watch this one go around once, and you're going to count how many times this one goes around on the yellow gear. So I'm going to turn the handle here, and we're going to see what happens. So there it goes. And around about now. The yellow gear has come back to the start, it's going around once, but the orange gear hasn't got there yet, so let's keep going until the orange gear is back there. Now you can see the yellow gear has turned nearly half a turn more than the orange gear. That means it's gone further in the same amount of time. If it's gone further in the same amount of time, that means that it's spinning faster. That's one of the things that we can use gears for. 
like the gears on a bike where you have a big cog at the front attached to the pedal that's the one you push on and turn it's easier to turn a larger cog and then that is connected by a chain to the smaller cog at the back which can turn faster because it's smaller and goes round more times for every time you turn the big cog and that is one of the main uses of gears so it's quite simple really isn't it the next step is a bit of a bigger challenge so let's see if you can understand it i'm sure that you can gear ratios now we are going to see why maths is so useful in everyday life. We are going to make a prediction by using something called the gear ratio. It's not that difficult. All you have to do is divide one number by another. What is difficult is that the people who made my gear set used some awkward numbers. Let's watch the video to find out more. Okay, so we saw in a previous video clip that we know that if we've got a big cog or gear and we use it to turn a smaller cog or gear, the smaller one is going to turn faster. It's going to turn more times for each time the big cog goes around once. This time, we're going to do a bit of a challenge to see if we can predict how many times it will go around. So what I've done is I've counted that on the large gear, the orange colored one here, it has 14 teeth. The smaller gear, the blue one, yeah, has six teeth. What we do is we work out something called the gear ratio. So a ratio is a word which just means when we compare the size of one number with another number. So we put the 14, the bigger number on the top, the six, the smaller number on the bottom, and then we can divide to make a fraction 14 divided by six. Six goes into 14 twice. And there are two left over. 2 over 6 is 1 third. That means there are 3 twos in 6. So what this tells me is that I'm predicting that if I turn the bigger orange cog once, the blue cog should go around 2 and 1 third times. How are we going to measure that to see if my prediction is correct? Well, remember I've made some marks again so we can follow these teeth. So the big cog is going to move in this direction and go around once. It's going to push the blue cog that way. So the blue cog, by my prediction, should go around once, twice, and then one third, which is about two places, because there are six teeth on this cog, and one third of six is two. So that should be two places along by the time this has turned around once. Do you think my prediction will be correct? I do hope so. Let's see. So off we go and keep an eye on that blue cog or gear. And there it's gone around once. And here it comes again. It's getting quite exciting now. It's gone around twice. And look, oh, the orange one is coming back to the star. And it started about there. And look, we've moved along two places. My prediction was exactly right. That is how we work out a gear ratio. Gears in action with Megan. Well, wherever there's action, we need Megan to help. Megan is a scientist and a very keen cyclist. So she's been using her bike to investigate gears. In the first video, Megan is just going to show us what happens when she changes the gears. You will be able to see that as the back wheel turns faster, she changes to a smaller and smaller cog or gear. Smaller cogs are called higher gears, which is a bit confusing. The reason is that the largest cog is called first gear, then the next size is called second, and so on. Tell me. Nicely done, Megan. There you could see that as the back wheel was 
turning faster and getting easier to turn, Megan was changing the gear to a higher and higher gear, which is a smaller and smaller cog, which makes the wheel turn even faster. That's a really good use of gears. More gears in action with Megan. In the next two video clips, Megan is investigating what happens when she tries to start pedaling her bike in different gears. In the first clip, she starts off in a low gear. This is what you're supposed to do. Low gears are easier to turn as they have a larger diameter, which means they're wider across the middle. If you've watched my video on levers, you will know that the further the effort force is from the pivot, then the easier the lever is to turn. So, the further the edge of the cog is from the middle, the easier it will be to turn. Let's watch what happens. Yeah, look how fast Megan's legs are moving. That's far too easy. Even more gears in action with Megan. This time, Megan is starting off in a high gear. Let's watch. Yeah, that looks quite hard. Megan's legs aren't moving as fast and she has to push much harder on the pedals. This is because a higher gear has a smaller diameter cog. And so, just like a short lever, it's harder to turn. Thanks, Megan. That was really interesting. What is a gearbox? Gearboxes are found in cars and other vehicles. They can also be found in machines like wind turbines or anywhere where wheels or propellers need to be turned. The problem is that you can't see the gears inside the gearbox. They are all sealed up so that oil can't get out and dirt can't get in. Somebody you know might be able to show you where the gearbox is on a car. If you're really lucky, you might know a mechanic who can show you the inside of a gearbox. I've made this model using a construction set belonging to my children. If you have anything like this at home, you could try it too. If not, don't worry. I've got some ideas anybody can try later on. In picture one, you can see that I've put three different sized gears on a propeller shaft. And picture two shows you that the drive gear, which is attached to the wheel that I'm going to turn with my hand, can be tilted forward to engage with the different gears. Let's see how it works in the next video. I'm pretty pleased with the model gearbox I made. Let's watch the video to see how it works. So what I'm going to do is move the drive gear, first of all, to engage with the largest gear on the shaft. Now these two gears are the same size. When I turn that, you can see that the propeller turns quite slowly. Now I'm going to engage it with the medium sized gear and you can see the propeller is turning much faster. Remember, the smaller the gear, the more times it turns. And when I engage it with the smallest gear of all, the propeller turns really fast. That's a really good example of a gear box where you can change the gears. Fun gear challenges. I've got plenty of ideas for you to investigate gears for yourself. If you have any gear kits like mine, you could try building more complicated machines. Here are two examples I tried out. You will probably have better ideas of your own, I'm sure. If you don't have any kits, don't worry. We'll have a look at ways that you can make gears yourself. In this example, I'm going to show you some three-dimensional gears. These two are flat and these two are upright you can make gears turn in different dimensions. In this challenge, I've made a model of a bike chain. Just like the chain we saw on Megan's bike, there's a big cog at the front, a pedal, and a smaller cog at the back. This is a kind of challenge that you could do 
and do a proper science investigation where you could change the size of the cogs and see what happens and maybe write a report to show to your teacher. Homemade gears, number one. Here are some ways you can make gears and machines using things you could find wherever you live. You will need help from an adult to cut things safely using the correct tools. From this website, you can choose different sized gears and print them out like I did. Let's have a look at the video. So here, I've printed out some gear patterns I've cut them out very, very carefully and then I've used that to trace around them onto some thicker card. And then I've cut the card out very carefully to make gears with different sizes and I've pinned them to this cork board and if I'm really careful, you can see that they turn just like on the plastic gear kit. That's a great challenge. I hope you try it. Homemade gears number two. These gears are made from bottle tops and lollipop sticks. You will need help from an adult to cut the lollipop sticks in half. You will also need some strong glue or maybe some plasticine or tape to attach the sticks to the bottle tops. There are some very clear instructions and more ideas on this page. Let's have a look at my video to see how I did it. So what you can see is that I've stuck a smaller bottle top from a squash bottle to the piece of card and then I've put the milk bottle top over it so that it turns very, very freely. And when I turn the one gear, it makes the other gear turn. Now what's great about this is I discovered that I could turn them with my hairdryer. If I turn the hairdryer up, you see they turn really, really fast. Oh dear, right, I think I'll have to fix that later. Okay, let's carry on. More gear challenges. There are lots more things you could do to investigate gears. You could do a research project and write a report or make a poster on the history of gears or machines that gears are used in. You could find out about this amazing machine called the Antikythera Mechanism, built by the ancient Greeks and found in an ancient shipwreck. Here's a link. You could look around for things that use gears where you live, like food mixers, bikes and drills. Or you could try to make a mechanical model like the one in the amazing final video. Have fun and we hope to see you again soon at an Abingdon Science Partnership workshop. So remember, if you do any of the gears challenges, we'd love to see reports, pictures or videos. Send them to me at my email address, jeremy.thomas at abingdon.org.uk. Thanks for watching.